a lot of new players have been joining rise of kingdoms in the past couple of months so today we're going to talk about the seven commanders that you must have if you want to be effective in the late game what's going on guys cheers in a previous video i asked you guys what you think this is it's just water guys i'm really lame it's i know it's boring but when i was drinking soda you guys were complaining about it so i don't know now recently i've been going live on twitch probably about once a week and if you guys didn't know that you're probably not in my discord so there's going to be a link down there as well as a link to my twitch if you want to follow me over there so you don't miss a live stream but i've been getting a lot of new players coming into the chat and asking me questions about what commanders should they be focusing on or what commanders should they work on next if they have so and so commander already finished so this video is for you but first big news clash of clans has generously sponsored today's video clash of clans is what got me into mobile gaming and it's just as good as i remember plus there's no crystal technology or armaments or any other stupid systems like that just drop your army on the battlefield and conquer and clash of clans allows complete customization of your city's layout which is good because it'll make a huge difference when defending against your enemies strategically use mortars cannons and powerful heroes like the barbarian king to defend your precious resources there's a reason clash of clans has been mega popular for over 10 years now oh my god i'm so old anyway what are you waiting for join the fire wielding wizards and mustachioed barbarians on the battlefield today for free using the link in the description or by scanning the qr code on the screen so i've broken this down into a few categories first we have the early game then we have when you first enter season of conquest then we have while you're in season of conquest which is the late game and then we have some honorable mentions over here for those of you who have completed everything else in the top three and i think it goes without saying that the first commander we're going to talk about is Yi song a Yi song a should be the first commander that you expertise in rise of kingdoms even till this day this commander came out years ago when the game first was introduced and he's still one of the first commanders that you get access to out side of the gold keys first you get Richard on the wheel and then you get Isong Ye on the wheel and this is where you want to put all of your sculptures before you get to season of conquest there's a few reasons for this but really it's just because Isong Ye has massive AoE skill damage he is a very vanilla commander all he does is massive circular AoE this is not only extremely good in PvP scenarios but it's extremely good in PvE scenarios as well which if you're a free to play player this is going to be huge when he's expertise he has a 1700 circular aoe that hits five enemy targets most aoe commanders in the game have a cone shape that only hits three targets so this is significantly better but not only that his fourth skill gives you 50 percent bonus skill damage most commanders in the game even ones that come out in the late game only have 15 25 percent skill damage or it's a skill damage with some sort of extra clause this has no catch there's no requirements for this you just flat out get 50 percent bonus skill damage and this applies to your primary commander as well what i mean by that is isong ye is almost always going to be the secondary commander because he's a glass cannon and you don't want people to know that you're using isong ye because he's a huge target because he's so effective not only that but he gets a little bit of a rage engine here which means that he's going to help your commander pairing pop off their active skills more frequently which is exactly what you want from isong ye and if he's in an all archer march he gains a hundred percent bonus attack not only that but when you enter the season of conquest he of course gets a relic as well this will further boost his skill damage to 53 percent and he gets 10 percent extra defense which is nice he desperately needed that so that's really good the reason that the circular aoe is so important is obviously because then it's effortless to hit multiple enemies in the open field but also for pve it means you're going to be hitting nearby barbarians which will effectively allow you to chain barbarians which essentially means you can kill barbarians for free free without spending down your AP and this is going to be a huge source of value for you as a free to play player or even a low spender and the last point I want to make about Isong Ye is that in the early game there's really nobody else to put your sculptures into right like sure you could save all your sculptures for season of conquest because those commanders are exceptionally powerful and arguably even more powerful than Isong Ye but then you're not going to be really playing the game for like nine months like of course in a perfect world you would save everything for season of conquest but you probably want to play the game as well and this is the best choice that you have in the beginning of the game now the next commander that you want to focus on is is Alexander the Great now his reputation has been sort of tarnished just a little bit he's definitely outclassed and outshined by a lot of the season of conquest commanders that have come out recently which wasn't the case when season of conquest was first introduced but similar to Isong Ye there's really no other early game commander that's worth investing your sculptures into besides Alexander the Great now if you're a hyper active free-to-play player 
or a low to medium spender and you can expertise alexander the great during kvk two or three then that is perfect however if you're collecting your legendary commander sculptures relatively slowly and let's say you get to season three of kvk and you haven't really even begun working on alexander the great then in that case i would say you can probably skip him but the reason that alexander the great is so good is because all of his skills are actually really effective in the open field which is primarily what you're going to be how you're going to be fighting as a free to play or low spender or as a new player most of the fights happen out in the open field you're probably not going to be a rally leader or a garrison leader or anything like that as a free to play or a low spender so you want to be as effective in the open field as possible alex is doing some really great things for infantry the first thing is that when he's expertise he gives you a shield but also a really powerful four second debuff that occurs in a circular area for up to three targets so three enemies in that circle will take 30 percent increased damage for four seconds that is huge not only that you gain a shield and you give a shield to an allied unit now this is really supportive in the open field obviously for the debuff but also because there's a lot of benefits that some commanders have when obtaining a shield for example guan yu when he has his expertise and he gets a shield he gets 15 percent extra skill damage so later in the video we'll talk about guan yu but assuming that you have allies in the open field who are using him then great you're actually buffing them in another way as well not only giving them a shield which is useful but buffing their skill damage his second skill gives him a 1700 single target uh, damage factor which is really nice and he's immune to damage reduction debuffs and he reduces target healing which is good a lot of commanders have small bits of healing on random skills or talents that we don't really think about or talk about too much so that's really nice and then he just gives you a ton of stats for infantry mostly attack a little bit of defense here but he also gives you 30 percent infantry march speed which is actually huge a lot of infantry commanders are super slow that's probably the worst thing about infantry is how slow that they are and even some of the season of conquest late game infantry commanders don't give you this much march speed so this is huge now the last thing i want to talk about with alexander the great is that he is scheduled to get a relic in the near future this is uh, you know obviously we only have season one and gold key commanders here in the museum right now but in the future alexander the great will be getting a relic as confirmed by the devs we don't know when that's coming out hopefully it's soon assuming that this relic is decent then that will bring him sort of back up a little bit in favorability in season of conquest if his relic is bad then he's still going to be a good commander but he's just not going to be as prominent as he once was but again in the early game besides YSG there's pretty much nobody else that you should put your sculptures into if you want to put sculptures into anybody so Alex is the way to go and I still don't think you're going to regret it I think he's still really good and that's it for the early game these are the only two commanders that I think really matter in the early game previously we would talk about commanders like Saladin maybe uh and yeah he's decent at five 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 one but He's really outclassed by a lot of the exceptionally good open field cavalry commanders in the late game. So I don't think you're really going to use him as much as we used to. Once you enter the season of conquest, there are two commanders that I think are commanders that you must invest in. The first one is CPO prime. Okay. CPO prime. I think for most players in the open field is the best single investment that you can make. He has a super powerful 2000 damage factor AOE with a really good 30% enemy health reduction for three seconds. He gives you a ton of infantry attack and march speed which we talked about is important but keep in mind here that even when he gets the bonus march speed outside of alliance territory the total is still only 25 percent so that's less march speed than alexander the great has built in all the time so that's just a testament to how effective the march speed is on alex it's really good he also gives you important infantry health here and a shield on yourself that you just get for free randomly and you're reducing the skill damage that you take you have a, a random shield that pops here sorry his third skill is the one that actually gives you a random additional damage over time and then his expertise is is really solid as well you just gain bonus 10 percent extra skill damage and when the target is silenced their your rage grows 30 percent faster so we love to see that everything about cpo here is exceptional and he's essentially just an even more powerful version of alexander the great 
which is why he's probably the first commander that I think you should expertise when you get into the season of conquest. It's also worth noting that he has the support tree, which is better than the attack tree on Alexander the Great. So what you're going to be doing obviously at this point is, you know, once you enter season of conquest, you're going to do a CPO prime primary with Alexander the Great secondary. And it's just overall going to be a very solid first March that you can build, assuming that you actually did get Alex. The next commander that I think you should invest in is actually Boudicca prime. And I know the cavalry players right now are exploding in their chair because they can't believe I still haven't talked about a cavalry commander, even though they're so good. And I get it. I know cavalry are super good in the open field, and I'm not trying to downplay that, but we have to think about what commanders do we have already, right? When you enter season of conquest, you already have YSG expertise. He's already good. He's already usable. You can get his relic. And what are you going to do with him? If you focus on a cavalry commander next? He's just going to sit on the bench and do nothing. And that's a waste of a legendary commander. So you might as well go for archers next. And this is where Boudicca comes in. Now she's super good with her skill tree. She is basically a shoe in for a YSG secondary. Her single target damage is really powerful. But what the reason people love her is that she is a three second debuff on a target. Not only does that target now take 35% extra skill damage, which remember you're going to hit them with YSG after that. So it's really powerful and 30% March speed reduction for three seconds. This is very good at snaring the target, slowing them down and swarming them with your allies. Really good stuff here. Second skill, a ton of archer attack here. You're gaining some March speed, which is useful and 30% increased defense when you go below 80% of units. That's nice. Her third skill just straight up reduces the skill damage she takes by 25%, which is huge because if you remember, YSG is pretty much a glass cannon. And the rest of this buff here is just a little bit of a buff that you get to your normal attack damage. It's fine. It's cool. It's bonus damage. We like that. The fourth skill gives you a little bit of a healing factor and increased damage to infantry, which is good. But one thing that I'll mention here is that if you want to save sculptures, you can get Boudicca to 5551, and she's probably like 80% or 90% of the way to her effectiveness. This fourth skill isn't that useful, but her expertise is. And this is one of the reasons why I expertise her. And I would say most people eventually should expertise her because there's an 80% chance that she dispels silences that she gets right. Control effects include silence, disarm and heal immunity. Really silence is the one that is the most popular here. That's because most players are running Guan Yu who has a silence on his primary skill. And that's why Boudicca is great. However, you have to remember that it takes 310 sculptures to get this last skill to five and unlock the expertise 310 sculptures for, for this is again, eventually you probably want to do it. But when you first enter season of conquest, I think a five, 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 one or even a five, five, one, one Boudicca would be really solid. This third skill definitely better than the fourth. And again, the reason that we're working on her is because you want to get your YSG in the open field in season of conquest. So you get that AOE damage, but also because building a relatively good archer set is pretty easy. And for most of the early game, you're going to be probably focusing on your infantry set because you're focusing on having Alexander the great. You could pretty much build a full revival set for archers and you're good to go. You might want to replace the chest piece with dragon's breath so that we actually get a little bit of archer health there. That would be super helpful. Yes. You lose the set bonus, but the archer health is just so good that it's probably worth doing, but yeah, building archers is relatively cheap, especially because you don't even have to expertise her, which is why she comes after CPO prime. In my opinion. Now, once that happens, uh, you're going to be pretty much full, fully fledged in season of conquest. That is the late game. You are in the end game. And here is where you have a few different options with these commanders. You now have two effective pairings. Okay. That's that you're good to go. Now you can decide if you want to invest in cavalry next, or if you want to invest in Guan Yu next, and this is really going to be up to the status of your gear, right? Are you still struggling to build a really good set for your infantry or your archers or whatever? If you are, I would say go for Guan Yu before you go for cavalry. The reason for this is because yes, you can build or start to build a decent cavalry march. But if you don't even have good equipment on one March yet, like you're still going to get swarmed down. You're still going to be just feeding free kills to the enemy. However, I would say if you can, this is probably when you want to diversify into cavalry. Okay. So again, I'm going to leave this up to you, 
but again the next two commanders that you should be focusing on are Nevsky and Joan now for those of you who opt for the Guan Yu essentially what you would be doing is benching your Alexander the Great and swapping him in for Guan Yu so it would be Guan Yu primary with CPO secondary the best part about Guan Yu is that you do not need to expertise him you can get him to five one five five of course this depends on your luck obviously the first time that you skill him up you could get lucky you also would like to have some skill resets I think those would be really you know if you're going to use them on anybody Guan Yu is probably the best value for your skill resets you really want to skip this second skill it only works within rallies and you're not going to ever be rallying with Guan Yu but his primary skill really powerful three target AoE and a strong silence for three seconds essentially silencing for those that don't know means the target cannot use their active skills and a lot of the value that you get from your commanders comes from their map from their active skills so stopping your enemies from doing that for three seconds is huge he also gives you some nice march speed here 15 percent not as good as alex but it's it's something a ton of infantry attack a little bit of a healing factor here which is fine and then you also get a really nice uh, additional damage factor here right so if your active skill hits one target you get a bonus 1000 damage factor to them it's a 50 percent chance but it'll happen and if you hit two or more then you have a 50 percent chance of dealing bonus 1400 right so that's that's huge that's an, basically an extra free active skill onto a single target which again very good assuming that you go for cavalry next again we introduced Nevsky and Joan at the same time and this is because if you only focus on one like who are you going to pair your Nevsky with yeah like are you going to do Tao Tao I mean I guess you could or maybe you could hide an ethel fled behind him because nobody would expect that or if you have Minamoto and you are you know if you expertise Minamoto then yeah you could do like a, a Nevsky Minamoto that would be pretty solid I would say but realistically you're gonna build pairs from now on okay now you're building pairs once you're in season of conquest you should be thinking about building armies in pairs and Nevsky Joan is the go-to best cavalry pair in the game right now in my opinion Nevsky is so good he's just like CPO Prime he's just like Alexander the Great in that he has all of his skills applying in the open field at all times and all of his skills are really good they're really good when he came into the game it was basically like a whole new tier of commander right he's basically better than legendary just like CPO Prime he's basically a, a mythic tier or a, a god tier legendary okay if you want to save some skills sculptures with Nevsky you can do five 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 one or you could try to do five five one five it really depends on what you're looking for this third skill gives you some bonus have defense and damage to surrounded targets but even if this is at one you're still getting 10 percent cab defense and a little bit of extra here whereas this being at five gives you 25 percent more skill damage for cavalry and a chance to increase that by an extra 35 percent for four seconds after ca uh, casting an active skill which you're going to be casting a lot of extra active skills with Joan of Arc because of her fourth skill we'll talk about that in a second but the synergy there is insane so there are some ways that you can save sculptures with Nevsky I mean again he's just so good that even at five five one one he's he's going to perform well in the open field way better than pretty much anything else for cavalry for that same amount of sculptures so don't feel bad about using him before he's expertise because he's still going to be great now his expertise is also really good 10 percent chance to give a 30 percent bonus health when attacked that's huge there's a small cooldown here five seconds and five percent more normal attack damage just for free like we love that so overall Nevsky eventually you definitely want to expertise him you definitely want to you will not regret it very very good but you can use him before that and then of course we'll talk then about Joan of Arc because this is the best pairing now other players uh use William 5551 that's a really great way to save sculptures I use William just because I have him already uh and I probably will be investing in Joan of Arc soon because it seems like a lot of the newer commanders that are coming out soon aren't that great and Joan of Arc is but she has a really powerful 2000 three target AOE she's also buffing herself and your allies giving them five percent bonus damage and 20 extra rage for three seconds so that's 60 bonus rage and remember you're gonna pop this skill twice every other skill cycle so her fourth skill uh, this is like her bread and butter here is when she's on the map when this is at five she has a 100 chance to cast her active skill now she's probably going to be the secondary commander here I like the skill tree more than the support tree just in general I think they're both great honestly but what's going to happen is Nevsky casts his active skill he's going to debuff them with his active skill as well by the way then you're going to hit them with Joan of Arc here with her nuke and then her fourth skill is going to make her pop that again now it's a 10 second cooldown because it's very powerful so it's probably not going to occur on the next skill cycle if you're 
you got a good rage engine but it will occur again on the one after that so yeah really good stuff here Joan of Arc you can start to use her at five one one five if you get really lucky obviously uh, you probably want to do five five one five this third skill isn't really that great it's 30 percent extra normal attack damage for one second though and it's got a cooldown so I mean it's something but it's not great five percent bonus damage when attacking it's again it's it's good but compared to our other skills like this third skill is not that great so five five one five would be like a really good Joan of Arc eventually you'll want to expertise her I think her expertise is good and again just in general she's a really good open field commander so you'll never regret expertising her and if you went for these two then I would say it's probably time to go back and get a five one five five Guan just so that way you can do the Guan CPO that's pretty much the best open field infantry uh, pairing in the game right now even with Tarek and Sargon in the game this is still where they shine now if you build these commanders then here's what's going to happen okay you're probably going to have something like this for a while and then eventually you're going to replace your Alex for your Guan and you're going to have one of each troop type just a really powerful March now let's talk about some honorable mentions right because if you have Alex and you still want to use him after getting your account to this point there's a couple things that you can do the first is that if you were lucky enough that you got your Mehmed to a five five one one or a five five one five something like that um then what you could do is you could actually do a CPO primary and then put Mehmed behind him this is deceptively good for a gold key commander he has a really powerful AoE he gives you bonus health with his relic and attack on his second skill plus he also gives you bonus skill damage on his second skill so there's a lot of great synergy here his fourth skill gives you more troops that you bring to the battlefield and the more troops you have in your army the more normal attack damage you're going to do the more skill damage you're going to do okay so there's a lot to love about this combination and if you do that then obviously you will do the guan alex uh combination here and boom you now have four effective armies if you don't like Mehmed or you've gotten really unlucky with him and you can't use him then you could also do the Herald expertise okay Harold Alex is a really good combination here Harold deals a lot of damage a lot of players don't even like hitting Harold because if he's surrounded his skill damage turns into AoE and it's a circle and he's just kind of wrecking havoc he's a little bit squishy and so is Alex so keep that in mind this might fill your hospital uh, relatively quickly but this is a combination that I use and a lot of infantry players use as well and then of course we could talk about the two newest infantry commanders if you wanted to do this as well uh you could do something like a Guan Alex and then you can decide do you want to pair CPO with Sargon if so it would be Sargon primary CPO secondary this is going to uh, basically apply a ton of debuffs to the enemy and of course CPO is just CPO he's incredible otherwise you could do something like this a 5515 Tarek behind your CPO is just a massive nuker he's a massive nuker he's he deals so much tar damage to a single target he deals a ton of bonus damage to cavalry which is I mean that's what the open field meta pretty much is right now so this is a very anti-meta March which is uh really good um, so those are some other ways you know that you could use your Alex if you still want to use him if you're comfortable benching your Alex and ignoring infantry altogether I would say the next pair that you would build is Zhang Yu with William now you can do five five one five with Zhang Yu this third skill is just for rallying uh objectives his expertise is good but again that's 310 sculptures for this expertise because this literally does nothing for you in the open field so you're spending 310 sculptures for 10 percent bonus skill damage and when you have a rage buff for more than one turn skill damage is increased by 10 percent for three seconds so again decent expertise but is it worth 310 sculptures you can decide and of course William as a five 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 one is pretty much where most people should keep him and then boom you now have the best infantry March a really really good archer march you could argue that you could do better than this but for the investment I mean this is the best value march I would say for archers for sure the best two cavalry marches as well and that is that now hopefully you guys found this video useful or entertaining if you did drop a thumbs up on it it takes a second and it really helps out the channel a ton it pushes this video out into the YouTube algorithm while you're down there subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of Kingdoms video I do want to take another moment to thank Clash of Clans for sponsoring today's video generous sponsors like them continue to help me do what I do here on YouTube so if you haven't played Clash of Clans in a while or if you've never played it before click the link down below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.